Location hey guys, confirmed. welcome back to Bite Size XCOM. The last video went to hell, so uh, we're starting a new, and uh, hopefully we'll have better luck this time. I won't be talking too much this video. Uh, keeping pace with the video while speaking clearly is pretty tough, especially when my microphone isn't the greatest. I'll be relying on a lot more on uh, YouTube annotation bubbles. Uh, anyways, in this video, I'm going to explore the idea of, of offense as the best defense. So consider this. Uh, high cover essentially halves the number of shots that you're going to take from a sectoid. But you know what also halves the number of shots you're going to take from a sectoid? Killing half the sectoids on the map. So I'm going to be using uh, low cover or no cover at a few points. Uh, in this video, I want you to consider the odds that uh, my soldiers will have survived uh, with my strategy, and I want you to compare that to a, a, a defensive strategy that would have been uh, applicable in that same scenario. First of all, I want to note that I'm playing pretty recklessly on this first mission. Uh, I do this pretty normally because you can always just restart after the first mission. You don't really have anything to lose. I know that's not really a hardcore Iron Man kind of mentality, but it's just how I, I enjoy playing the game. Typically, I would not go for any meld canisters in the parking lot, because uh, going to grab them get is liable to get your soldiers surrounded. Typically, I would just forego the meld and go through the back alley. There's lots of doors, lots of line of sight breakers, there are lots of full cover. All, it's all around great. Now back to the video, I'll kill two sectoids here, leaving two in the garage with a shot on Rookie Fujita. I can either let them take the shot, or try to kill one of them preemptively. For demonstration purposes, I'm going to take the offensive play. In this case, the defensive play has slightly better survival rates. I'll post the exact odds on the screen. But both strategies turned out pretty comparable. If things have been slightly different here, the offensive play may have been superior. So just food for thought. Now I do take a risk here, even though I have guaranteed lethal damage, and it's because I want my last rookie promoted. And since it's the first mission, I don't mind the extra risk since I can restart. Good work out there, Strike One. <laughs> Commander, we've picked up multiple requests for assistance. Abductions in progress are marked on the Hollow Globe. Now I'm going to uh, go for the four engineers and attempt a march satellite rush. I'm also going to uh, dismiss my assault and support for this mission because uh, heavies, uh, snipers, and rookies are better investments for your experience. Squad sight, snapshot, bullet swarm, all skills that are better than uh, sprinter, tactical sense, and aggression. Also, rookies, they're very cheap, uh, and they give you a chance at an extra heavy, so they're also very big. Note that I blow up the wall here uh, deliberately. This gives us a flanking firing port for my uh, my rookie and my sniper to kill those last two sectoids. Now, since we kicked down that door instead of opening it quietly, we've attracted a few sectoids. Fortunately, our heavy is in position to deal with them. Okay. In this case, I don't use a grenade to blow up the wall, because uh, I may want to use that wall to my advantage in the future. So just be careful with how you, you aim your grenades. Moving. I triggered some sectoids here, but um, it wasn't intentional. I probably should have expected them to be there, but uh, in the heat of the moment, I just didn't. Fortunately, um, triggering them accidentally didn't put us in a terrible position. Fastball special. So I can either move my sniper outside line of sight, or I can hunker him down inside line of sight. I choose to hunker him down inside line of sight because he's pretty safe regardless, and by drawing fire, I prevent the sectoids from being in overwatch. If they're in overwatch, that inhibits our ability to be as aggressive the following turn, which definitely isn't what we're looking for. It's raining death over here! Solid copy, Commander. Got him. 
Mission accomplished. 10-4. Location confirmed. Moving to designated position. You're a team position. here to get Van Dorn, right? He ran up ahead to find one of our men and got caught in the blast with his freaks at the bridge. Heading there now. So this is the Van Dorn mission. Gun Unfortunately, gun. I forgot to uh, record the base management video before On this mission. Way. The rewards are a promoted assault, a panic reduction in Nigeria, and a um, hundred some credits. I've brought two rookies, a sniper, and my heavy. I'm on it, Commander. My goal is to give as many kills to the heavy as possible. Since this is a, is a special council mission, none of the rookies require any kills to get promoted, so I'm going to avoid giving them any kills. Uh, what else? Uh, the sniper is basically going to get squad sight after this mission, regardless of how many kills I give him. So, I'm going to avoid giving him kills as well. If I dump a lot of XP into my heavy, I'll have a high ranking soldier, meaning I'll have earlier access to uh, larger squad sizes. I'll also have uh, earlier access to heat uh, ammo, shredder rocket, and danger zone, which are also all amazing skills. So, the trick to council missions is uh, dealing with the 4th and man airdrops. If you ignore those 4th and men that drop out of the air, um, you're just dealing with a, basically an abduction, only you know exactly where all the spawns are, and 3 of the sectoids have been replaced by them yet. So, in terms of that, it's much easier than your traditional uh, abduction mission in March. But the 4th and man airdrops can be pretty nasty to deal with if you're not in position to kill them right away. Now, I'm making a mistake here. When I fired this rocket, I figured it would either kill all 6 sectoids, or just uh, 3 of them. I was not expecting it would kill position 4, confirmed. leaving 2 in position to like take a flank shot on my heavy. So that was not good, Heading that was not intentional, location. but uh, fortunately things work out reasonably well. I'm on it, Commander. I'm about to start keeping score. The flanks! <laughs> On the move. Planet him. On my way. Let's do this. Good to go. We're green to go. Now I want you to pay attention to uh, how I deal with the We're upcoming Thin Men airdrops. I spread my soldiers out, so basically no matter where a Thin Man drops, I'll have at least one soldier with line of sight on that Thin Man. shot at these bastards. I owe it to my men. Strike one. You've got a wave of x-rays closing on your location. Eyes up. I also want you to note uh, how slowly I'm moving up Van Dorn. When I ca save him, I don't move him at all. I wait for a thin man to drop. I kill that thin man, then I move him up. By doing this, I spread out the thin man airdrops so that they're uh, much more manageable than uh, getting like two at once or something like that. Is headed your way, Strike One. Get ready. Down. Back in. Rock and roll. Rack tag. Oh, yeah. Moving to designated position. Move, move, move. Time to motor. <laughs> Pull an ass. Roger that. Moving to designated position. Roger, Dodger. Roger that. Scanning. Stay alert, Strike One. You've got hostile forces about to hit your position. The last two dead men on the uh, Van Dorn mission are actually pretty easy to deal with. Um, in this case, they both land next to cars, so I can just throw two grenades, detonate the two cars they're standing next to, and uh, get a guaranteed kill. But I fire with my soldiers without grenades first. So I can get a few more weapon fragments and uh, get an extra kill for my heavy if I get lucky. Uh, unfortunately, I lost video towards the end of the mission, but um, fortunately, there's no more aliens beyond that. So I basically won the mission when I killed those last two thin men. Uh, here, I actually ignore the small UFO. I have 97 credits, and I can sell three weapon fragments with two more credits. That'll give me enough money to build a satellite uplink in time. So there's no need for me to shoot down the UFO for early cash. I can delay it, get a medium UFO, and get substantially more money shooting that down instead.
I got pretty lucky with promotions the last mission. Both of the rookies got promoted into heavies, and of course I got that uh, that uh, high-ranking assault as a reward from the mission itself. That's pretty good. Our a uh, squad site sniper may be wounded, but with three heavies and an assault, I'm feeling pretty good about this UFO mission. We'll monitor those readings from here. Strike one is authorized to assault the alien craft. Running. Affirmative. Moving out. Got it. Moving. That's affirmative. So there's going to be a lot of nothing going on at the start of this UFO mission, and I'm what moving. I the moral of this mission is. We want stuff to go on. If you're not seeing any sacoids anywhere, that's okay. usually a bad sign, and you'll see at the end of this mission why that's bad. But um, other than that, I'm just doing pretty standard fare, moving fairly slowly, fairly cautiously, trying to figure out where the metal containers are and capture them. Yes, sir. Visual on the goods. So since we haven't found any sacoids towards the front portion of the map, we can safely assume that. All the sectoids, and there could be up to 12 on, on, the, on a medium UFO map, are cramped together towards the back end of this uh, UFO. There's two options, you can try to split them up and deal with them individually, or you can go in guns a blazing and try to take them all out. Uh, since my team composition has three heavies, I'm going to favor the guns a blazing groups, and we're just going to hope that However, the sectoids split up after they're spotted, they do it in a way that we can take them out quickly and efficiently. Fortunately, since the UFO is a, such a small, cramped uh, building, this should be fairly simple. That looks like the primary power source for the alien craft. Running. Now, I'm going to trigger a fuck ton of sectoids right about now. And the key to dealing with fuck tons of sectoids triggering all at the same time is to keep your call. The first thing you need to do Keep your eyes on all the sectoids. Some of them be might move out of line of sight. You need to know where they are so you can blow them up with explosives, even though they might not be up out of line of sight. So like I said, keep your eyeballs on those sectoids. Do not panic, and then figure out a plan to kill as many of them as possible without exposing your soldiers' uh, flanks to any remaining sectoids that may be alive. So, uh, I actually completely forgot about the outsider in this case. I was so focused on dealing with those uh, fuck tons of sec toys that I just, it just completely slipped my mind. Fortunately, it's not a big deal. Um, our heavy can retreat outside line of sight. Uh, and furthermore, we have grenades, we have rockets, we have a run and gun assault. We just have so many ways to deal with him that, in this case, I, instead of retreating, I choose to just blow him up and just take him out. And fortunately, work, things work out pretty well. Time to motor. Position confirmed. That's ray neutralized. So, we actually have a pretty interesting decision to make for our second abduction. Uh, I'm definitely not going to uh, take a mission in Nigeria because even if I ignore Nigeria, they won't defect this month. Uh, the choice is basically between four scientists in the UK and four engineers in Canada. Since this is pretty early for a second abduction mission, four scientists are very, very powerful. Uh, secondly, since uh, I have a lot of money, four engineers is also a very powerful play. If you, since I got four engineers in the first abduction, if I get four engineers in the second abduction, I have a solid chance of getting um, seven satellites and four uplink and two uplinks by April. This is only possible if you have a lot of money, but since we shot down a medium UFO, we do have a lot of money. Um, in this case, I'm going to go with the UK. There's lots of good reasons for this. Um, since I don't want, I can let Canada panic. Since Mexico's already panicked, I don't get any extra panic for that. I can sacrifice Canada without losing my continent bonus. I can reduce the panic uh, basically all over the UK. Uh, I can reduce panic all over um, Europe down to one. So basically I can allow 
Europe to panic the, the next month Can and just like not lose any countries. So that's also great. And once again, Here they come. Uh, four scientists in the first half of the month is still pretty damn good. So I'm going to go for the UK in this case. Although I, I have to come say, on, four engineers, Heading the potential out. to get seven satellites Tracking. and two uplinks in April. That is extremely, extremely tempting, and you should consider it if you're ever given the opportunity. Anyway, this map is called Fast Food. The goal of this map is to get onto the roof. Once you're on the roof, you can uh, break line of sight and engage the aliens on your terms. The challenge of this map is getting onto the roof in the first place. There's not going to be enough high cover to go around for all of your soldiers, so some of your soldiers are going to be in low cover. If you're forced to make the decision, do I take a shot with my low cover soldiers, or do I hunker them down? Think about it, if you hunker down your low cover soldiers, it won't quite have the amount of damage they're going to take. But, if you kill half the aliens, you will have the amount of damage they're going to take. So if you can ensure that you can kill a lot of aliens with that last soldier that's in low cover or no cover, take that opportunity. Also, don't forget that uh, since we're trying to rush the roof, the quicker we kill the aliens, the sooner we get onto the roof. The sooner we get on onto the roof, the fewer shots we need to take. So that's just even further incentive to play Walk aggressively on this particular map. Another day, another successful operation. It looks like they're really taking care of business down there, and without so much as a scratch. That was the last mission in March, so the rest of this video will be me doing base management stuff. I'm just going to try to get out as many early game advantages as I can before April comes by. So, interceptors, as much excavation as possible, alien containments, um, and that's basically it. The only thing really worth noting is um, I'm planning to sacrifice both Canada and Mexico because both of them are in my starting continent. So I can lose both of those countries without losing any uh, continent bonuses. I'm also pretty willing to sacrifice European countries because I don't really care for the uh, Europe continent bonus either. And um, that's really all there is to say for this particular video. Thank you for watching. Um, base management will continue after I finish speaking, but uh, thank you for watching again. And I'll see you guys in the next video.
We will be watching.